not all fighting is bullying. This is important to understand. Especially school age boys mix it up. They push, they shove, they get into fights. And fighting is wrong, but not all fighting is bullying. Bullying involves four things. Number one, aggressive behavior that's violent. Okay, what's the difference between aggression and violence? Aggression is the force you need to protect your boundaries. Violence is that same force used to violate the boundaries of others. So if a kid is violating the boundaries of another kid, that's called violence, that's aggressive violence, and that's the first thing that's needed in order for it to be bullying. Number two is the intention to cause harm or humiliation. There's the intent to humiliate the other person. Bullies like audiences, and so they use other kids' attention in order to humiliate the victim, and there's the intention to do that. Three is there's an imbalance of power. Now that imbalance can be intellectual, can be physical, can be social, can be emotional. There are different ways you can have an imbalance of power, but there has to be an imbalance of power in order for bullying to take place. And number four is important. There's the likelihood that it's going to be repeated. This isn't just a one-off fight. This isn't just a scuffle that happened once and isn't gonna happen again. This is something that has the threat of being repeated. That's bullying. Okay, what do we tell our kids when they've been bullied. Number one, you tell your kid to look the bully in the eye and you say, stop it, it's not funny, and you get out of the situation. Bullies need an audience, don't give them an audience. So you get yourself out of the situation. If you see another kid who's being bullied, you say to the kid, hey, come here, I need to talk to you, and you guys leave, get out of there. You can grab him by the backpack if you need to, pull him out of the situation, and go say, look, we gotta talk about homework, let's go, and you get out of the situation. Remove yourself from the audience. That's key. Tell an adult and keep telling until somebody listens. It's very unfortunate, but most teachers don't understand bullying. They don't understand the criteria that I just outlined for you, so they don't know it when it's happening. They think it's just a scuffle. They don't know that it's gonna be repeated and they don't know there's an intent to cause harm or humiliation, so the teacher doesn't know how to deal with it. So tell your kid to keep talking until somebody listens. Keep your parents in the loop. If you are having this repetitive bullying going on, you've gotta be talking to your parents, you've gotta keep them in the loop. The school really has to get involved. In order to really effectively stop bullying, there's a whole community reaction that needs to happen. We all need to raise our awareness that bullying needs to stop, and we need to stop it together. And if it really gets bad, seek professional help. Now what if you've been the bully? You can make a decision right now today to stop it. Stop bullying. Bullying is always wrong. Make a commitment to yourself and to God, you're not gonna do it anymore. And there's a second thing, and this is the most important thing you need to do. Make the decision to be kind to a kid who's been bullied. We know that kids who've been bullied say the thing that's helped them the most to deal with the bullying is when some other kid has decided to be kind to them and has taken acts of kindness and directed them towards the kid who's been bullied. You can make a difference in the life of another kid who's been bullied by you deciding to be kind to that kid. Bullying, whether you're the victim of bullying or you've been a bully, needs to stop. We can stop that together. Let's work together to stop bullying. I'm delighted to be able to tell you that my book, Jesus the Greatest Therapist Who Ever Lived, is now approaching two million copies sold worldwide. This book is a psychological look about the teachings of Jesus. We all know his spiritual message, which is what he came to tell us about. But what most of us don't know is that embedded in his teachings are bits of psychological wisdom that are brilliant for how to conduct our emotional lives today. If you want to read more about the integration of psychology and the teachings of Jesus, you'll be able to get a copy and judge for yourself. Is he the greatest psychologist who ever lived? I think so.